Rapid prototyping is a very important part of product development. We're going to talk about where the additive processes like stereolithography and 3D printing and the subtractive processes of milling fit into the rapid prototyping process. We'll also show some specifics of how milling for prototypes can be different from traditional machining. DesignCraft specializes in complete product development services for a range of industries including consumer electronics, aerospace, and medical. We can take a product all the way from a napkin sketch through the design engineering phase into prototyping and pre-production. We can even help the customer get into final production. The additive processes of stereolithography and 3D printing come into the development cycle early. Our designers can come up with the concept, and within hours, we can send it to the machine and have a part back in their hands. Milling generally takes over once the design concept is confirmed with additive models. With CNC machining, we make a very realistic end product out of the actual materials that the customer will want for their production parts. The additive process can be very fast. Even if the product is intended to be made out of a very specific plastic or metal, the 3D printing process, or stereolithography, can at least get the concept into the designer's hand early. That way, they can be assured that at least the concept is right. Even moving assemblies can be validated this way. Our object machine gives us a special advantage by allowing us to basically print parts that move. A single printing process can make a flexible bicycle chain, for instance. Many potential materials are expensive, and lead times may be long so building an additive part is very helpful to confirm each step. In the final design phase, we may run to several editions of a polyjet or SLA part, just to see subtle differences before we go into machining. When it comes to milling, any material is fair game. We can do plastics, aluminum, soft metals, or even steel or exotic alloys. We can use milling to make one or dozens or even hundreds of parts. This can help a customer get through the pre-production phase where they might otherwise be waiting many weeks for hard tool design and manufacturing. The milling process also lets the customer see, feel, and test the physical characteristics of the true material. The resolution and accuracy of the machining even allows us to simulate things like stampings, where lead times for the dyes can be weeks. We help get their end product to market faster. But milling for prototypes can be quite different from milling production parts. Our fixturing, spindles, and tool setups are just three examples. To fixture our parts, we often use a custom adhesive and virtually always set up off the same surface. Consistent setup of the part in Z automatically eliminates one step of the setup. While adhesive wouldn't work for production applications or in oily, coolant-soaked environments, it allows us a quick and easy way to set up flat parts. Naturally, that adhesive won't hold as tight as a vise or a milling clamp. High-speed spindles allow us to mill parts with less cutting force than conventional milling. All of our mills are 30,000 RPM or higher. Fast light cuts are the rule to produce accurate parts quickly. Operator setup may take as much time as machining for some of our more complex parts. Minimizing the manual labor of our work is key. Laser tool probes are one way we reduce setup time. With laser probing, the staff doesn't need to set tool lengths or check tool runout. They can simply put the tools in the holders and put the holders in the tool changer. The laser probe does the rest. Fast time to market is pivotal in product development. Most people think of the additive processes like SLA and 3D printing when they think of rapid prototypes. At DesignCraft, milling and the additive processes work together for speed, quality, and a wide choice of services. <laughs>